question popped up again in the beta flight thread. Does it matter where you put your flight controller on your quad, where the gyro is? Does it affect the behavior of the quad any? And quite simply, for acro mode or any rate stabilized flight mode, the answer is no not at all your flight controller can be in the middle of your quad it can be at the front it could be all the way out at an arm it does not matter where the flight controller is for acro mode or rate stabilized flight modes at all what follows now is a lot of numbers and diagrams and let's show why that is thankfully the whole thing is pretty straightforward to show there's no ambiguity to it there's a lot of complexity in the quad but when you boil it down you can remove a lot of that complexity to prove that the position of the gyro does not matter so we'll look at it simply in two dimensions and then show that that same thing works in full three dimensions and then at the very end we'll look at some of the caveats to to what we're looking at now some important things just to lay down the groundwork of what we're talking about this is just for rate mode attitude stabilization anything that uses the accelerometer that's a different matter entirely but we're just looking here it rate stabilized modes and looking at the position of the gyro via the flight controller on your quad. The other thing to note is that the gyro itself does not read the angle that the quad is at. It reads the rate of change of the angle, the speed that the angle is changing at any instant in time. However, the speed that the angle is changing and the angle itself are intrinsically linked. You cannot change one without changing the other. Just in the same way that you cannot take an object and reposition it, move an object to another position without affecting its speed. You have to accelerate an object to start it moving and decelerate to stop it moving again. You cannot change the speed of an object without affecting its position. So in the same way, you cannot change the rate of rotation of an object without changing its angle and if you change the angle you will have an effect on the rate of rotation so what i'm going to look at primarily in these examples is is angles fixed angles not necessarily uh the speed that an angle is changing but for these purposes those two are completely interchangeable so if we boil a whole system down into straight two dimensions we have just uh, uh, our little kind of origin and point here. And if we draw a line straight through and then assume that this goes off to infinity in both directions. So this is a roughly 45 degree line. And we can look at this angle here that goes right through the origin, or well, close through the origin. And we can see that that is 45 degrees. And it doesn't matter where we measure the angle of this line, if we measure all the way up here, the line is 45 degrees. If we measure down here, this line is still 45 degrees. All the way out to infinity, this remains a 45 degree line. So the position along this line that we measure does not change the angle that the line is. If we rotate this line so it's pointing straight up, still passing through the origin, and measure it any point along it and see that it is 90 degrees at the top at the bottom and even all the way at the origin where we're spinning the line from it's 90 degrees everywhere so if we had this line this red line and we spun it up and it took one second for it to spin up to be vertical to be 90 degrees that's going from 45 degrees to 90 degrees, that's a 45 degree per second rotation. And we know that since the angle right here at the pivot where we're spinning it from is 45 degrees from the red to the, the orange, that that's 45 degrees a second. And all the way up here at positive infinity, even though this is a much bigger distance, than this here, the angle that the line is, is still 45 degrees bigger than it was over here. So although the distance has, has moved, the angle that it's looking at, the angle that we're seeing, is exactly the same as it is down here at the origin where we actually spun it. And the exactly the same as it is down all the way in the negative values as well. So it does not matter where you measure the line from the angle is the same and we can see that the 
rate of change, if this is a one second spin, that the rate of change is the exact same no matter where on this line we measure that from, it remains identical. So this exact thing applies equally to a quad. If we assume that we've got a quad here and we've got our motors, if we have our little black box that's our flight controller, we can look at the angle that that flight controller is sitting at and see that this angle is 45 degrees. And if we put that flight controller halfway down one of the arms, we can still measure that that flight controller is at 45 degrees. So no matter where we put this flight controller on the quad, we can put it on the bottom of one of the arms. And if we look at the angle, it is still 45 degrees. So it does not matter where it's positioned, the angle that it's at remains the same. And so the same thing happens if you spin this quad so that it's 90 degrees vertical, the rate of change at any of these points is identical. Now what would it look like if we actually did measure a difference in the angular velocity at two different points on the same line? So if we take our 45 degree and we're 45 here and we're 45 here, if we spun this line so that this point reads 90 and this point still reads 45, we get something that looks like this. And we can measure this angle and see that it's 45 degrees and this angle and see that it's 90 degrees. So the only way that you can get different measurements, say that these are the two points, you can get different measurements along the same thing, along the same plane as if this is bent. And obviously that's not what's happening with the quad when you reposition the, the gyro. We're assuming that it's a rigid system. Now that's all well and good to look at in two dimensions, but it holds out exactly the same way when you take all three axes of rotation into consideration. So here I have a simple 3D mock-up of the body of a drone. We got, you know, four motors and uh, the center there, and I have three little uh, flight representations of flight controllers. And I've marked on all of these uh, each rotational axis. and. I have a probe point attached to each one, so I can select each of these flight controllers and we can see their global position and rotation here on the values in the right. So right now the quad is flat and level and all of them rotate values for X, Y, and Z, roll pitch and yaw, are all zero. And I've got one flight controller in the middle of the quad, one all the way at the nose, and then one all the way at the tip one on one of the, uh, the motor ends. So I can take this whole thing and we can spin it around on one axis just like we did in the two-dimensional uh, example. And we can see right here I've got minus 47.3 degrees that the quad is, is uh, pitched forward. And I can look at the center one and see that it's minus 47.3 degrees. We can look at the one on the nose and see that it is also minus 47.3 degrees. And the one on the arm reads exactly the same value. No matter how I spin this, all of these values will always be exactly the same. And the rate of change of these values is what the gyro outputs. Remember the rate of change and the angle itself are intrinsically linked. So the only way that we are going to have a different rate of change at any of these particular spots is if these arrows all start pointing in different directions somehow. All of the green arrows line up the same way, all of the red arrows line up the same way, and, and so forth. And if I grab this and move it on yet another axis, all of these arrows still point the same direction relative to each other. The blue still always points out to the side, the red still points out to the front, and now you can see we've spun it in two directions. And if I look at my probes, we're at you know, minus 73 on X and minus 47 on Z, minus 73 on X, minus 47 on Z, 
73, 47, and I can click through all of these and you can see that these numbers do not change at all. The position of them in world space does change, and this is why it matters for the accelerometer, but the actual rotation values of all of these points in space for this rigid quad body, which is not bending or, or flexing or folding in the middle, that remains identical no matter where they are. You can, I can move this up and spin it in all sorts of angles. And if I select any of these probes, the rotation values remain identical no matter what way this is moved. And this remains true even if I take one of these probes and, and let's move it like way, way off, like totally far away from the body of the quad like this you know we're getting miles and miles away from where the quad is and if I take the quad and rotate it you can see that little that little point there that little speck is moving super super fast but if I spin this around a whole bunch and then we look at the mid our rotation 50 13 54 and at the front, 50-13-54, and on the arm, 50-13-54. Translation values are very different, but the rotation at this point in space relative to the body stays exactly the same. So no matter where you move your flight controller, the gyros will read the same rotations. And since the gyros are out output the same number, then all the rest of the system behaves exactly the same. The quad has literally no way of knowing where the gyro is placed based on the rotation numbers that it kicks out. And this test is very easy to do yourself on, on your own physical quad. Uh, it's not just a, a computer thing. You can take little, stick little arrows onto different parts of your quad, have them all facing the same way, and try and twist the body of the quad around and see if you can make the arrows point different directions just by moving the body. Here I'm spinning the camera around or grabbing the, the body and spinning the body relative. No matter how I spin this body, they will always point the same direction. They will always read the same number because they're always spinning the same speed. Even though it's traveling, the nose one is traveling a greater distance, the angle that it sees has changed the same amount as the one that is in the middle of the quad. Now there are other factors that affect where your flight controller might end up. If you did put the flight controller all the way out on the tip of an arm, the arm is going to be a little more flexible and so it's going to move around, you're going to get more noise. And noise certainly has an impact on how a quad flies and how easy it is to tune it, but it's not fundamentally changing the way your, your mixer doesn't have to change in a global sense. the macro reading of the angle and the angular velocity of the quad remains the same even though the noise value is rides on top of that. What also does really matter is when you have the accelerometer taken into account. The accelerometer reads translational acceleration and so that has a case here where the flight controller in the middle when I spin it around it's not moving very much but the one on the nose is actually translating up while it's rotating back. And so if you have this sort of situation, when you're pitching forward, the accelerometer is going to, to see a downwards vector, and so it's going to think that the quad is going down. So that does have an effect on things, but only when talking about level stabilized flight, not rate mode where the accelerometer is quite quite often disabled entirely. The important thing to remember here is that changing the location of your flight controller does not change where the quad pivots from. In this case, we're assuming that the center of mass, the center of gravity, is right here in the middle. And if you put the flight controller on the front, the quad will still pivot around its center of gravity. Because as far as the gyro can see, all points along the body of the quad are at the same angle and are at the same angular rate, it has no way of knowing that the gyro is anywhere other than where it's already pivoting around. So moving the gyro forward to the nose does not make the quad want to spin around that point on the nose. And having the gyro all the way over on one of the arm corners does not make the quad want to spin around one of the 
the arms, it'll still always pivot around that center of gravity. So even looking at this from a, a top side, if we look at the flight controller here, this does not have like a zero length arm on the right and then a really long arm on the left because when we pivot it, the distance between where it's pivoting here in the middle and the motors is exactly the same distance as it is when you look at the flight controller positioned here in the middle because that pivot is based on the physical mass of the quad and not based on where that gyro sensor is located.